So last week, Tucker Carlson became the first right-leaning outlet to host a Palestinian Christian on his show, and Zionists have come out shocked. Here's the clip that is going viral. If, if you wake up in the morning and decide that your Christian faith requires you to support a foreign government blowing up churches and killing Christians, I, I think you've lost the thread. It, it, just to, to end on this, if you had a message for Christian leaders in the United States, whether in government or in churches or just citizens who care about the religion and their fellow Christians, what would it be? It would be to remind them that when the state of Israel was created, it was not created on an empty land. It was created on a land that had uh, millions of indigenous Palestinians there, including Palestinian Christians. And that that state they support, uh, that state they celebrated as a fulfillment of prophecy and a sign of God's state to the Jewish people for it to become a state. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, including Palestinian Christians, uh, were forced to leave and have never returned. Uh, churches were closed. A friend of mine did the research and counted more than 30 churches that were closed when Israel was created because Palestinians uh, were expelled from uh, the land. Our numbers continue to be in decline. Uh, so we're pleading that uh, come and listen, come and talk to us. And my message to Christian leaders right now is there is a very, very brutal war taking place in Gaza, a war that I've described using the word genocide because it's a war that has used even starvation as a mean and fellow Christians are suffering because of that war. Uh, it's time that uh, Christian leaders uh, recognize that wars is not the way, whether in Iraq and Afghanistan and Libya. And, I mean, when will we learn that war does not help? When will we take Jesus's words seriously uh, about being peacemakers, about being merciful? Merciful. There must be uh, other ways. Uh, and so it would be an invitation to listen, to learn more, uh, and to avoid very shallow and simplistic perspectives that are not based on scripture itself, but more based on uh, political uh, equations. Uh, and I would plea right now, and I will continue to plea that we need to stop this war in Gaza. Uh, it's killing many, many children, women, innocent lives. It has to stop. There must be uh, other ways. And as a follower of Christ, uh, we have to pursue the path of peace uh, and justice, and we have to avoid simplistic uh, polarizations, good and evil. Come and listen, come and understand what's happening and I plead as a Christian pastor from Bethlehem, I plead that you come uh, and listen. Father, thank you for your thoroughly decent and sensible analysis, and I hope it's heard by Christians throughout the West. I appreciate it. So Tucker Carlson is under big time fire for that. People are absolutely outraged. How dare he? He's a traitor. He's a traitor. Um, is what some are saying. Here is a response thread that I want to read to you. This is by Joel Pollack. He's the senior editor at large at Breitbart. He's also Jewish. He's also a Zionist. He says, allow me to respond to Tucker Carlson's interview here with um, by with uh, Munther Isaac, who is the, the priest he was speaking to, by talking about the facts rather than speculating about whether Tucker hates Israel or is an anti-Semite. He says he's concerned about Christians. I'll accept that. But there's no excuse for this, says Joel Pollack. There's no excuse for bringing on somebody to tell you about their plight. How dare he? He says, first, a fact about Bethlehem. Christians used to be a majority there. They're now a minority. That's true. Throughout all of Palestine, there was many Christians, and now they've dwindled down to a tiny little fraction. The Palestinian Authority has been Islamicizing the city since taking control of Bethlehem 30 years ago. Israeli occupation is hardly the primary issue. Another fact, Bethlehem has become an anti-Semitic city under Palestinian control, far worse to Jews than even to Christians. In 2007, I was told not to speak Hebrew there. In 2023, I was told to remove my, yarm my yarmulke or cover it with a hat in the birthplace of Jesus, a Jew. Yeah, but Jesus wasn't a practicing Jew. Uh, well, at least not to what current Jews would consider Judaism. He practiced what we call Christianity. There's a whole debate that we could have on that at another time, but um, he goes on to then say, Reverend I Isaac does not believe Israel should exist, a fact Tucker does not discuss. He also repeats my false claims 
about Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza, like the claim Israeli snipers killed two civilians in a church, which the IDF, which admits other mistakes, refuted, right? Because we believe all of the refutes that IDF makes when they, oh, we didn't mean to kill that American Palestinian journalist. Oh, four months later, okay, yeah, actually, no, all right. Well, we didn't kill her is what they said. And then four months later, okay, yeah, we did kill her. We didn't do that. Okay, yeah, maybe we did do that. Um, that's what we keep hearing from them. But Joel Pollack makes a lot of excuses, and he's saying that, um, you know, that that saying it, Reverend Isaac does not believe Israel should exist. Well, Israel as a Jewish-only nation, as an ethnostate, many of us do not believe that ethnostates have any place in this world decided upon ethnostates that are created by cleansing the indigenous people off the land that is not something, and if you are the indigenous people and you want to say we want to remain indigenous and we want to preserve our indigenous nature and our indigenous culture, that's one thing. But to clear off half the more than half the people, that's a totally different story. He goes on to say, remarkably, Reverend Isaac criticizes the Abraham Accords, a peace agreement between Israel and several Arab states. Mind you, the Arab Accords did not include Palestinians. Um, they were not consulted on it. One who is truly interested in peace should welcome that development. For Reverend Isaac, that peace deal is bad because it distracts from the Palestinian struggle. Well, it's bad because they didn't include Palestinians. He says, Reverend, Reverend Isaac is an activist who campaigns worldwide against evangelical Christian support for Israel. He tells Carlson, evangelicals should not use the Bible as a basis for supporting Israel. He is entitled to these beliefs, but they are not authoritative in any broader sense. Reverend Isaac says, Israel is not as free as, as, free as people say for Christians claiming it's tough to register conversions. And he says, bureaucracy is tough for everyone in Israel due to laws dating to the Ottoman era. Tucker extrapolates falsely that Christians have fewer rights in Israel. Carlson adds some of the interview's most incendiary comments suggesting that the U.S. should not give Israel aid if one Christian is killed and should not support a foreign government that he says is guilty of blowing up churches and killing Christians, which, he, which Joel Pollack says is false. We've actually, Justin Amash's family was killed after a Christian church was blown up in Gaza. One suspects Carlson's real target is Republican foreign policy. He mocks self-professed Christians in the U.S. whom he says are sending money to oppress Christians, another false and inflammatory statement. He attacks evangelical speaker Johnson, Mike Johnson, for supporting Israel. There are many pro-Israel Christian Arabs. Concern about Christians would suggest backing Israel against Islamist Hamas and opposing Palestinian Authority policies. Tucker has taken his opposition to a U.S. role in foreign wars to an absurd extreme. And then here is the reason why I'm reading this thread. This is the icing on the cake, the frosting on the cupcake. This is what he says. <laughs> he then finishes off by saying, apologies for the typos. I'm on a flight to Israel. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course you are. Wow. Okay. Um, well, look, and, and that's and, and that's the editor for Breitbart, and that's a very right-wing outlet. This is what Tucker's up against. This is what we're all up against. 